We now leave regular ABC programming for a direct satellite feed from the Chaser Corporation's 24-hour cable news network, CNNNN. But this is one pie-eating contest that President Musharraf vows he'll never enter. I'm Simon Tarje for CNNNN. Back with more in a moment. CNNNN would like to thank our affiliate stations in ZBN Zanzibar, SBN Solomon Islands, and now ABC Australia. Time now to check some of the other stories making news this hour. And Iraq is preparing for its own version of the Archibald Prize. The portrait competitions attracted a record number of entries this year, with a picture of Saddam Hussein once again tipped to take out the honours. History made in the top end this week when a man wanted by police became the first ever white person to ride in the back of a paddy wagon in the Northern Territory. In Palestine, the leader of the Islamic resistance group Hamas has lashed out at the latest round of Israeli attacks, which he says are becoming increasingly personal. And a Melbourne man has taken his four-wheel drive vehicle slightly out of the city. The driver went nearly 30 kilometres beyond the city outskirts and said the trip really justified his decision to purchase an all-terrain vehicle. This is CNNNN. And just returning to our top story, staggering new proof of Iraq's nuclear stockpile. US First Lady Laura Bush had a dream last night about Saddam building weapons of mass destruction. The CIA is interviewing Mrs Bush, who claims it was one of those dreams that, quote, seemed totally real. Yeah, look, this is the smoking gun we've been waiting for. And well, the uh, thing about dreams, of course, is that you can't make them up, can not. you? Of course, and this comes off the back of the proof that Tony Blair put out mm. this week. I mean, did you see this photo? I did. Taken over Iraq, and you don't need a trained eye to see what's going on there. That is Nuke City. Well, the thing about guilt is you can even see it from the moon. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know why the Iraqis then mm. let the media in to look no, at this no, site. No, no. Didn't that backfire? Oh. I mean, the minute I saw this facility close up, I was only more convinced convinced. Have a look at this state-of-the-art nuclear facility over here in the States and then have a look at the infrastructure that they've already got in Iraq. Mm. They've already got bricks, they've already got steel I know, I know. and the way they build things over there, I mean they'll have this facility up and running in a matter of weeks. Mm. You do the math. Well it's day 373 since evil got wings and today's other top story of course, America on full alert. US President Bush has upgraded the country's terror warning from code orange to code purple. CNN and N's chief terror correspondent Anna Skellen has more. That's right Craig, it's the fourth time today President Bush has changed the colour of the alert. Make that the fifth time. And I see it's now uh, code yellow, what does that mean? Code yellow means don't answer the door to anyone, take the safety off your firearms and most importantly conserve oxygen. Any other news on the terror front, Anna? Some good news on the hunt for Osama. With the US military pinpointing bin Laden to one of just two specific locations, the Middle East or the subcontinent. Not Africa, Anna. Or Africa. But we can now say with certainty that he isn't in Antarctica. Good news for our polar viewers. But even as we tighten the net on this evil mastermind, one wonders if we're really any closer to the elusive man I like to call Father Fear. Almost a year ago to the day, the world's most powerful man made a simple promise. We will find those who did it. We will smoke them out of their holes. We will get them running. And we'll bring them to justice. But one year on, Osama bin Laden continues to elude authorities. Despite a massive search effort by the military, local police groups and astronomers. These people have been hired by intelligence agencies to check Bin Laden hasn't concealed himself in a tin of canned food. But still, there's no sign. Some claim Bin Laden is dead. But this old footage shows that Bin Laden was once very much alive and proves there's no reason why he couldn't be again. Perhaps the real problem is that people everywhere have simply stopped looking. This is Anna Skellen for CNNNN. Mmm, a wake-up call for us all there. Which begs the question, just how wanted is the world's most wanted man? Chas Lichardello went undercover to expose public complacency. In the public domain, doing some research. 
or just chilling out. I successfully infiltrated every level of Australian society, even enlisting the help of authorities. But no matter where I went, who I met, or what I said, nobody wanted to know about Osama bin Laden. Wake up, Australia. You're dancing with danger. You'd never compromise with terrorists, and you'd never compromise on your coverage. This is CNNNN. I'm Fungry. Try Fungry's new Big Breakfast in a Bun. You get three eggs, rashes of round bacon, hash brown, pancakes, a French croissant, and porridge. The Fungry's Big Breakfast in a Bun. Perfect for those mornings when you're on the run. Yet another reason why... I'm Fungry! I'm Fungry. For me, September 11 was like a reminder of what journalism's really about. It's hard to put into words, but when I was standing there at Ground Zero, surrounded by hundreds of my colleagues, I had this strange sense that somehow, by our very presence, we were making the World Trade Centre safe again. That's why I'm with CNNNN. Coming up on CNNNN, the 9-11 survivors trying to move forward. One year on, they're tired of always being interviewed about that day. We ask them why. A very moving special, tonight on CNNNN. Back live, and if you've just joined us, a reminder that a code yellow terror alert is in place. Anna? It's now code aubergine, I'm told. Code aubergine, sorry. Tension in the US is heightening as Julian Morrow is standing by in Washington. What's the latest? Well, the situation is that we're getting more unconfirmed reports here that you've been getting reports back there. Sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you there, Julian, because you've finished your answer. Dominic Knight is standing by in Barbados, I believe which is no use to us at all. So let's go instead back to Anna Skellen. And uh, Anna, we're getting new reports that we're now in fact on Code Red. What does that entail? Code Red is high-level government scaremongering designed to make people feel less secure so they support an attack on I'm Iraq. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off because we have Simon Tajay standing by in Ibiza. Simon, what's the mood like there? It's pretty vibey here at the moment. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you short because we're joined in the studio now by Admiral David Merrick who of course served with the US in the Gulf and is an expert in world terror. Admiral, what can you tell us about the mood here in the studio? Well, I think... Sorry, I am going to have to cut you off there, Admiral, because we're just getting reports of a new unconfirmed report of a possible report. Anna Skellen, your response? It's now code avocado, I believe. Craig? Chris? Julian? Chaz? Sorry, we seem to have a technical problem in Brussels. We'll be back after this. Now, Freedom has its own news network, CNNNN. With the entire world on heightened alert, it's time for cooler heads to prevail. Charles Firth? I'll tell you this for nothing. I'd rather rot on a crucifix than let Saddam get his hands on our women and children. He is off the leash. Oh. And you can read about it in my book, I'd Rather Rot on a Crucifix. On today's Factor, Iraq. It's an issue that's very easy to oversimplify. So I've taken a backward step to consider both sides of the debate. Respected leaders from all around the world say we must invade Iraq because they may be developing weapons of mass destruction. Some people say we need more proof. Well, I've got news for them. We cannot afford to wait for proof. Wise words, and history is on his side. In the battle between David and Goliath, the gentle giant made the mistake of waiting and paid the price. On September 11, democracy also paid heavily. We now know the terrorists came from Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Lebanon, trained in Yemen, Sudan and Afghanistan, met in Pakistan and Malaysia, were funded through Italy and Germany and were taught to fly in America. There can only be one response. Attack Iraq. Why? Its leader is evil. If this was Saddam Hussein's heart, how black would it be?
Now that's a heart of darkness. But it doesn't in there. This never before seen footage reveals Saddam is testing weapons. And a Firth Factor investigation has uncovered shocking proof of a link between the September 11 attacks and Iraq. Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein, both names have the same number of letters, 13. That's unlucky for Saddam. Despite what all these namby-pamby liberal peaceniks may say, the solution is so simple. We must bomb Iraq now, if not sooner. If only Goliath had learnt that lesson, he'd still be fighting fit to die. And that's the birth factor. Still to come this hour, we'll be going one-on-one -on -one with Tony Blair, putting the tough questions on Iraq, and he'll be bringing in his pooch, Worcester. That's coming up. My children. My wife. My parents. My CNN. -in I'm Fungry. Order Fungry's new big breakfast in a bun and we'll throw in a free cup of coffee. With all the free refills you want. Yet another reason why... We're Fungry! I'm Fungry. Coming up on the Bonnet Channel, another sumptuous feast of poncy melodrama, fake moustaches and dim-witted heroines. Outstanding British drama tonight on the Bonnet Channel. Welcome back. Last week, of course, on September 11, the world stopped to remember. Remembering the victims, kick-starting the war on Iraq, it was terrific television. And rating number one is something we'll always remember. Thank you for choosing CNNNN and well done to the whole team here on their wonderfully restrained coverage over the full 20 days. Mm, just a reminder too that you can still buy these at our 9-11 anniversary CD of last week's Minute of Silence. You got the full 60 seconds captured on one very special disc. And some wonderful bonus tracks on that disc, Chris. Oh yeah, you've also got the, uh, the Minute Silence from Denver. The Minute Silence from Washington and that uh, 40 second radio mix of the Pittsburgh Silence I know we all enjoyed, so uh, a real keepsake. To order this wonderful collectible, just go to our website and click on the link to Profiteering. Well, you all loved it, but surprise, surprise, some critics have complained about the tone of our 9-11 coverage. What do they want? Geraldo Rivera on Fox News? <laughs> Look, I don't know what they're feeding him over there in Afghanistan, but he has gone soft. And I know where Osama bin Laden is. He's either six feet under here someplace, or he's a sissy hiding under the bed in some hovel, hoping against hope that a special operator doesn't kick down the door and put a bullet in his damn ear. Very dumb. But I do have to commend my good friend Naomi Robson on Australia's Today Tonight. A fine anchor. Look, and on location, there is no one better. She got the mood at ground zero spot on. Now, when we return, liposuction, Botox, facelifts, Australia's 82-year-old queen of cosmetic surgery. See, they're the stories you can only tell if you're actually there. It was the right location for the right story. Time to check what else is making news this hour. A Triple C chairman, Alan Fells, has announced he'll be retiring from his post in two years' time to take up a new position with the Tony Bartuccio dancers. A professional footballer has shocked the sporting world by announcing he'll take it six games at a time. The decision comes just days after the player also said he wasn't prepared to give 110%, citing mathematical impossibility. Still on sport, a Gold Coast court today declared former Sydney Swans footballer Warwick Kappa criminally inane. The judge ordered Kappa to be incarcerated as he was deemed likely to offend again. All right, well, let's check in now with our Director of Weathertainment, Dominic Knight. And where are you tonight, Dom? Thanks, Craig. Yes, I'm here with the folks at Texas' busiest death row. They're a happy bunch, aren't they? Come crack it on tomorrow. Young Willie here is going to be visiting Mr Sparky, if you know what I mean. Anyways, I'll be back later on with a full weather wrap-up. And as I always say... The outlook is sunny! As always, Dom, thank you. We'll catch up with you again later on. But to politics now. And the turmoil in the Australian Democrats continues to threaten the party. Julian Morrow has more. It's a party in crisis. 
eight senators representing 42 different factions and still no leader. First, Brian Gregg split from Andrew Bartlett. Now, Andrew Bartlett splitting from himself. So I've come down to this Democrat forum to help members decide who should lead the party into oblivion. We've got those uh, slogans you're after. Natasha, as seen on TV, you're a bit of a fan, aren't you? I enjoyed Natasha's leadership right. and uh, she was very good for the Democrats. And it was pretty high ranking, yeah. Do you think we should get Don back? I'm very fond of Don. Okay. And uh, we talked over issues and he's keen to see the party get back on track. All right, so you think that he could finish it off? <laughs> the ugly Natasha, what do you think? Oh, I think it's pretty accurate, but I'm not sure it's a vote winner. <laughs> Brian, what about yours? He'll do? He'll do it right. Come on, guys, we're just trying to help the Democrat revival. What do you think? Very much appreciate your assistance. I'm yeah, OK. Yeah, I'm sure we can do it on our own. Take it all the way to Canberra. We reckon we found John's major positive. What's that? What do you guys think? Oh, well, this guy's pretty good. OK, now, Lynn, she seems nice. Oh, that's because she is nice. She is nice? OK, so she is nice. What she do you think? Nice. And she's a good whip. And she's a good, she's a good whip. <laughs> I know you might not be too keen about this one. Right. Let's keep the bastard. Are we gonna, are we all together? We'll be bastards and every, every now and then, but we want to keep us all. Yeah. All right, and Meg, do you, what, we want Meg back? She has put the rat back in Democrat, don't you think? Oh, she is, but you know, still supporting Democrat policy. Or still supporting Democrat respect. policy, yeah, yeah, especially the rat part. Oh, I mostly like, loyal? Don't do you think like that's that one? Well, no, no, I no? Don't think that's why not? Fair. No, it's not. You don't think it's fair that he's mostly loyal? Mostly loyal. Mostly loyal. Do you think that sums it up? That's absolutely fantastic. But you had a stab card when you're coming to election day. Just work out which one you want. We've even thought we'd give you a bit of a hand. There's a dagger. No, there look, you go. These look like imposters to me. Take, I'm not going to clutch that. Well, you could do it Natasha style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's slightly wimpy. Well, it's, it is a Democrat dagger. Yeah. What, what's your message for the, uh, for the how to stab voters? Take a stab with the Democrats. Take Put a stab. Not, not a stab at the Democrats. Oh, I don't have a slogan, but I think I'm, I'm the man for the moment. Do you think he's the man for the moment? Uh, well, depends how long the moment is. You know? Have you made up your mind who you're going to stab today? <laughs> No stabbings today, no stabbings. No stabbings? Well, there's not many left, are there? No. no? Do you want a knife? Not at all. You want someone else to do the dirty work for you? We could probably, if no, John Cherry's know. around, he could do it for you. Just remember, stab early, stab often. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you should ask that, because when I came across from the LA Cola Music Chart Show, I must admit, there were a lot of people who said I didn't have enough experience in news. But nowadays, I think there's too much thinking in journalism. A lot of people have come around to my point of view. It's not about here, it's about here. That's why I'm with CNN and N. I'm Fungry. Need a break after your big breakfast? Well, Fungry's is now serving brunch. Our brunch-tastic brunch menu is the ideal nutritious snack between 10.55 and 11.05. Fungry's Brunch. Yet another reason why we're Fungry. I'm Fungry. Rita and Len for Hyper Twin. This week, Rita and Len face the evil boat people. Give us your land. We want everything. Defeat the scourge of the boat people. Find out this week on Shaping the Minds of Tomorrow today. This is CNN NN. You're back with us live and still ahead in the ring. Today's hot question after Iraq who needs a nukin? Here's a taste. I want to see mushroom clouds over Iraq, Iran and Libya. You could dust the three of them down in one trip and still be home by Christmas. What about Pakistan? Pakistan? What? How are they any different from Iraq? They're a military dictatorship. They're building that nuclear weapons. Oh, look, Taylor, Pakistan is our ally. They're fighting oh, for no, our freedom. If, it was, if it was up if... to me, once we've invaded Iraq, I'd just go back in there and invade them again. You are a fool. You're a buffoon. Yeah. You're a traitor. Oh, boy. <laughs> I warn you now, it gets pretty heated. And we want to hear from you on this. Join today's Hot Topic Hotline, Who Needs a Nukin? Yes, give us a call and tell us which of these countries most needs a nuclear bomb dropped on them. Phone now. This is CNN NN. All right, well, let's cross now to Chaz Lichardello at our Brussels desk. 
Sorry, we seem to have a technical problem in Brussels, so let's go instead to Andrew Hansen to find out what's happening in the markets. Good evening. In US stocks today, hot chips have soared while hot swords have chipped. The slim, dusty industrial average gained 46 to collapse at 8,900 batteries. On Tuesday, economic asphyxiance on durable headset orders in July and consumer violence in August are doubtfully expected with some confidence. Late Thursday, geriatric colostomy manufacturer Sloshy Holdings, who is the last Dow component to report truculence, is expected to show earnings of 14 goats per sheep in its most recent bedchamber, compared with 11 superheroes in the year earlier transvestite. I'm Andrew Hansen. For all the latest in business news, log on to www.bizbiz.com.com. News just in, Australian Prime Minister John Howard is taking the war into his own hands by preparing to launch a personal strike against Iraq. And look, he's not alone in wanting to bring this war on. The mood here in America is very khaki at the moment, as I discovered when I took to the streets to measure public opinion. Other than Iraq, how many countries should the US be allowed to invade during the war on terror? Everybody A3? Except six or as many as it likes as many as we like and why do you say that because we are the, we we are the superpower we yeah. control the world yeah. actually as many as we have to so as many as they like let's go with three three and why do you choose that one uh because in certain circumstances with countries harboring terrorists we have the right to go in and get them sure and, and kill them like they're killing us uh, seven seven mm -hmm. okay why seven well that's the ones involved in it we know about that so right okay which seven are they well, I don't want to name those. <laughs> Shit, everybody other than Great Britain. What, what about Australia? Australia better get in line and go hang out with Great Britain and leave us alone. Those we know are involved. Right. That's what we're doing, surgically removing those involved. The innocent people won't get hurt if we can help it. To properly avenge September 11, how many Iraqi civilians should the US kill? A, the same number as the September 11 death toll, B, 10 times the September 11 death toll, or C, unlimited? as many as they need to. The same, just to even it out, I guess. Unlimited. Unlimited. And that could range from anything of the whole of Baghdad to whatever's needed. The whole country. The whole <laughs> whatever. Country. No, I think we should have blew up the whole country. It's horrible to have, like, civilian casualties, but as many as needed. <laughs> Civilians. Civilians, yeah. They better get out the way. They can make the whole country into a big glass parking lot, for all I care. What do you think the, the US invasion of Iraq should be called? A, Operation God's Fist, B, The Empire Strikes Back, or C, The Final Solution? I like God's fist. Why do you like that one? Because God's wrath is upon their heads. Final solution. Why do you like that one? Because that's the way it should be, the final solution. The people, once they see what we're doing, they're going to get behind us. I think it should be called vote for me on election day. Final solution. Yeah, we'll Finishing it up then. Right, okay. Is there a Iraqi fresh? What's an appropriate amount of Baghdad for the US military to destroy? A, at least half of it. B, all of it. C, only the bits where people live. I guess all of it. No reason. All of it. All of it. Why do you say that? It's just what I believe. They came over and... I don't know. I just, I just have my beliefs. If they want to come over here and do that crap, then we should go... Just, I, I don't know. I don't, have a, I don't even have a problem with just destroying the whole city. How would you feel about the US using nuclear weapons against Iraq? A. Support it. B. Strongly support it. Or C. Can't understand what we're waiting for. Can't understand why we're waiting. Right. So long. Um, A. Support it. Right. Okay. Why is that? Um, because they do the same to us. Sure. I mean, sure. like... If they had Killed the weapons. a lot of people, yeah. None of the above unless they strike first, then incinerate the bloody bastards and take them straight to hell like we did the Japanese in the Second War. CNNNN, rewarding the good, punishing the evil. Coming up on the Reality Channel, you loved Ozzy and his family. Now go inside the lives of Australia's answer to the Osbournes on The Bournes. Tonight at 9 on Chaser Reality. Not getting the news fix you want? On CNX, we cut to the chase with the CNX News Slam. No more boring stats, just a lot more stats. Why put up with a comprehensive news service when CNX serves up the big hits? Less explanation, more detonation. The CNX News Slam, only the news you want to see. You know, I was talking to my driver this morning. He normally loves the news slam, and even he was saying he's seen too much of that 9-11 footage of the planes. Mm, 
Maybe. Look, I, I still think it's terrific TV, though. Mm. Look, my driver's been going on and on about that non-stop 9-11 channel on Chaser Cable. Oh, yeah, the 9-11 24-7 channel. You've got to love that, don't Look, you? Look, it's fantastic, and they did a great special last night showing some all-new unseen footage from 9-11. It's just amazing, isn't it? Some of the vision, the amateur vision that's still coming through. If you missed it, have a look at this clip. Shot literally just blocks from the World Trade Centre, but amazingly, never before seen until today. Dead little fella. Yeah, that's it, little fella. Come on, give me a smile. Come on. Yeah, that's the boy. Come on. Oh, my God! What is it, honey? It's incredible footage, isn't it? And for those who want more 9-11-24-7s already preparing a new special, more unseen 9-11 videos, number eight. So if anyone has any more amateur video they're sitting on, please send them in to the address on your screen. And time now to check some of your emails. Julian? Yes, John from Mellonfield writes, I loved your coverage of the 9-11 anniversary. I'd forgotten what the collapsing towers looked like. And this from Lisa in Swan City. Loved Firth's interview with Nelson Mandela yesterday. You tell him, Firth. Well, that's your say. Stick around, because in the next hour, we'll be presenting a CNNNN special on the pets of September 11. Mm, that's featuring one very courageous goldfish. On the other side of this break, Tony Blair. CNNNN. We report. You believe. Welcome back. Well, he's been described as a simpering fool. We now return ABC viewers to their regular programming.